My name is Jesse, and I'm a core committer with Mattermost. This tech talk is about slash commands. I'm going to start with a brief overview of what slash commands are all about, including how to use the ones built into Mattermost. Then I'll move on to custom slash commands, demo one of the ones we've written for pre-release, and show you how to set up your own. Finally, I'll give you a brief walkthrough of the Mattermost source code that handles slash commands. All right, let's switch over to pre-release. Pre-release is an open Mattermost instance running the latest code from master. Feel free to join if you have any questions about this tech talk. So slash commands are simply messages that begin with a forward slash character. Notice that as soon as you start typing a slash, Mattermost lists the available commands. And as you type, the list is filtered down. You can tab to autocomplete, enter to run the command. The shortcut slash command I just ran is one of many built-in slash commands that require no setup or configuration. Here, it's simply displaying the list of keyboard shortcuts on screen. There's also a slash command for quickly starting a search. Notice that slash commands consist of a keyword prefixed by a forward slash, optionally followed by some parameters. The search slash command used the parameters I supplied to run the search, while the shortcut slash command didn't require any. You can find a complete list of the built-in slash commands on docs.mattermost.com. Of course, slash commands aren't just a way of interacting with the user interface. Here on pre-release, we have a custom slash command for annotating daily stand-ups with the current date and useful search hashtags. Although custom slash commands are run the same way as the built-in slash commands, under the covers, they are implemented very differently. Each custom slash command makes an HTTP request to a configurable server with a corresponding response posted as a message. Let's set up a custom slash command on my demo server. First, we need to make sure slash commands are enabled. If you're not a system administrator, you'll need help from one to make these changes. Open the system console, browse to custom integrations, and enable custom slash commands. You can allow users other than system and team admins to create custom slash commands as well if you don't restrict managing integrations to administrators. Save your settings and switch back to your team. Now open the main menu, go to integrations, slash command, add slash command. For this first demo, I'm going to wire up a pre-existing third-party HTTP service with an API that responds in plain text. Random.org is a website dedicated to generating random numbers. If I open the developer console and monitor the network requests, I see an XHR request to fetch the random integer. Let's copy that link address and use it to configure our slash command. I'll set a title. Give it a trigger word of random and paste in the request URL. This particular endpoint requires a get method. And I'm going to enable autocomplete so that it shows up in the list of slash commands. Save the setting. Back to my team. You'll notice random now shows up in the list. And every time I run it, I get a new random number. Of course, this is only scratching the surface of slash commands. If we want more advanced functionality, including the ability to handle custom parameters and tailor the posted message, we need to write our own custom endpoint and deploy it somewhere for the Mattermost server to hit. If you've watched some of our previous tech talks, you might have encountered the serverless framework. I'll be using that today to deploy a simple function to AWS Lambda for generating random numbers. Of course, you can use any language you want and host your endpoint anywhere that your Mattermost server can reach. You'll find a link to this repository at the end of the video, but here's a quick overview of the code. In the main routine, we seed the random number generator and wire up the AWS Lambda handler. Then, for every incoming HTTP request, i.e. every incoming custom slash command request, we process the parameters and either return an error or a JSON encoded payload. This payload contains a markdown formatted message in the text field and a response type field telling Mattermost to post this message in the channel for everyone to see. I'll build and deploy it and keep track of the HTTP endpoint returned by serverless.
And of course, it's a good idea to do a quick command line test to make sure it actually works. Good. Excellent. Now let's configure the slash command in Mattermost and observe the updated functionality. Back to integrations, slash command, we'll edit this time. Change the endpoint, change the request method. Let's also add an autocomplete hint to help our users when they use this slash command. Back to the team, give it a whirl. When you write your own slash command, it's entirely up to you how you parse the parameters and generate a response. It's even possible to send back multiple responses within a time frame. Check out the complete documentation at docs.mattermost.com to learn more. Of course, since the Mattermost server is open source, you can also check out the source code behind slash commands. Open up app slash command.go and take a look at the execute command function. Here you'll see the built-in slash commands being processed first. There's experimental support for slash commands implemented via plugins. Here's the restriction that decides whether custom slash commands are enabled. Then any necessary metadata is fetched, a payload is built, and finally the HTTP request is invoked, hitting your custom endpoint. That's an overview of slash commands. Join us on pre-release to continue the conversation. Until next time.